and welcome to That's Entertainment, the weekly entertainment show where we look at all the interesting news last week or this week. More international viewing figures were unveiled at the digital MIP TV market at a presentation from Glance. Glance is the global audience and content evolution. According to VP Frederick Valpre, all over the world, viewers have increased in number and become more devoted to the programs that they watch. Globally, you see that TV consumption remains very stable since 1982. The difference comes from the different regions. What is striking to see that now, the number one region in terms of TV consumption is Europe, followed by South America. The average global daily TV consumption increases by 6% in 2020, for two hours and 54 minutes. Europe was the region with the largest increase of 15 minutes per day, while the US saw a decrease of about eight minutes per day. According to Nielsen data, SVOD viewing increased by 10% in the US, while the number of minutes watched by French Netflix subscribers almost doubled. Avril Blondelot, Glance's head of content insight, summarized that 10% of productions launched in 2020 are linked in one way or another to the health crisis. Changed or transformed, all genres have impacted international co-productions and are more needed now than ever before. Game shows, thrillers, and travel programs continue to attract large audiences. Well, where are these audiences switching from? Well, that's traditional TV and, and cable television. Um, and the switch is happening at an incredible rate. One of the things that the SVOD streaming services lack is that casual viewing. The breakfast shows, the, you know, the lunchtime content is not really there on the platforms yet. And that's the role that traditional TV used to fill. So we're probably going to see a rise in daily talk shows, uh, more casual viewing. I know that the cooking um, elements of Netflix have been something that have been growing very quickly and we're probably going to see a lot more of that. The subject of binge watching versus the appeal of weekly episodes was once again discussed this week. A piece by The Hollywood Reporter noted that Nielsen's weekly compilations of total viewing time, the broadest available measure of streaming usage, show that while Netflix all at once releases tend to result in big premieres and heavy drop-offs a couple of weeks later, weekly releases have longer lives in the top 10 mark or category. Well, that goes to do with the pacing. If someone burns through their subscription of you know, eight shows or whatever in a weekend, well, they're not going to be around in eight weeks' time to be watching it, so that seems fairly logical. Disney Plus has benefited from such weekly releases, according to Gabriel Lewis, Senior VP of Content Creation and Programming at Disney Plus. Our goal at launch really was to build up our fan base by releasing content on a weekly schedule with titles like The Mandalorian and WandaVision. We felt a weekly drop schedule uh, would build anticipation and it would allow viewers to experience the rollout of series together. According to Nielsen's figures, WandaVision added viewing time and more viewers for six straight weeks. It seems likely that its replacement weekly Disney Plus Marvel show, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, will build on that success. Its debut episode generated 495 million minutes of watched, up from WandaVision's 434 minutes. I've got to say, I think when you're burning through five or six episodes in a day, your attention span by the time you've got to the third or fourth episode is probably worn out and people are probably more likely to hit the fast forward button or the skip button on the bits where, you know, they can't be bothered with the drama. Um, I think the weekly release or, you know, serialization of uh, episodes is still going to be something that's popular for more complex storytelling. I think that might be a good rule to institute. Anyway, no one's releasing these numbers, so this is just speculation. And the speculation is the sample set of one, which is me currently. But by all means, put some ideas or thoughts into the comments about this. We'd love to uh, survey you guys. So here is a question for you. When you're watching something on Netflix or HBO um, and you are uh, binge watching, how often do you skip the, uh, um, segments of the show? And how many episodes do you watch in one sitting? Disney also unveiled plans for the first three UK series this week. Swashbuckling Highwayman Adventure, The Ballad of the Renegade Nell, dark comedy culprits about the criminals from a heist being targeted by a killer later one by one, and Extraordinary, a comedy about a young woman who lives in a world where everyone has a superpower except her. That's, yeah, that's an interesting take. I could, uh, I could definitely watch a more quirky take on the uh, superpower stuff. I gotta say, I really did love the boys. Meanwhile, Netflix confirmed their local content plans for uh, two other territories. They're funding 30 new productions in Colombia in 2021. Well, that's a new market for sure. And will be reopening an office in Bogota. 
Amazing. Since 2014, the streamer has invested over $175 million in local content from the country. And in Spain, they announced plans for seven new films and series, including a docu-reality show focused on Instagram star Georgina Rodriguez. In production news from streamers, several key new documentaries were announced this week. David Beckham is teaming up with Disney Plus on a football series called Save Our Squad. The unscripted series will see Beckham return to London soccer pitches where he played as a child and mentor a young grassroots side. Fellow sports star Serena Williams will be a focus of a new documentary series for Amazon. Imagine Pictures are making a new Louis Armstrong documentary for Apple. And Hulu has bought the documentary feature Changing the Game about transgender teen athletes. New movie new announcements this week include Natalie Portman will star in a film adaptation of Elena Ferrante's The Day of Abandonment for HBO. Netflix are funding a live action movie based on a classic animated TV show Gunman directed by Jordan Vogt Roberts. SNL star Peter Davidson will be play legendary punk Joey Ramone in Netflix biopic I Slept with Joey Ramone. A new scripted series unveiled this, this week include Courtney Cox's horror comedy Shining Veil vale for Stars, an adaptation of the movie Arlington Road for Paramount Plus, new modern day sci-fi drama The Imperfects for Netflix, and Call Me God for Paramount Plus, an adaptation of the audio drama from Audible about a sniper in Washington. Thank you very much for tuning in. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Remember, we publish this show both to LinkedIn and to YouTube. We look forward to uh, coming back to you shortly again with more news for the entertainment industry. Thank you. Bye-bye.